inverted contact. I'm going to place it down here in net two, again against the rail. And again, it's a button, so I can remember it's MB2, or I can type in button in the search and select MB2. Now let's look at the difference between these little schematic drawings. We see there's a slash going through MB2. This is an inverted contact or normally closed contact. So when the bit value MB2 goes high, this contact will be open. <coughs> we can use again a direct coil as the output. Again, it's light output, so let's do light. We get light output too. Okay. And we'll give this a description. When MB2 is high, MB3 will go low. Okay. So the nets look similar, but we notice we have one inverted contact here uh, compared to the previous one. So when we have MB2 high, we will have MB3 low. So let's go ahead and we'll download this again. I'm just going to notice we have this uh, double yellow arrow that we can expand and decrease the net size. If we double click, we also minimize it. It's nice to minimize these things so we can see as much on the screen as we can. So I'll just fix this one too. Okay. So again, connection, download. And I'm just going to do a live download this time. Again, the images are different, so we can hit OK. Okay. So the program has finished downloading. Let's take a look at the HMI again. Again, I can go to Connection and Online Test and bring up the HMI. This, by the way, you don't necessarily need to do, bring up the HMI on the, on the computer, but it's a nice way that I can share what's going on on my desk with you guys uh, over the webinar here. So again, we have our first button. We press our first button. The light goes on. And we see with our second setup here, the light is on. When I press the button, the light goes off. So we have built an inverted version of the first net. Um, we did this specifically by using the inverted contact. So because we have bits, uh, again, a bit has two states, either on or off, we could take advantage of either of those states using uh, our memory bits. Okay. And then again, our specifically our contacts and our coils, what we're going to use to work with our memory bits. Okay. Um, are there any questions on that? And if you have a question, you can post it quickly. Okay, I see the echo is gone. That's good. <laughs> okay, I'm going to leave the online test here. And we're going to go back to the latter section. And this time, we're going to build a slightly more uh, complex network. We're going to build a light again. And this time, we're going to give it an on and an off switch. So again, I have to leave the online test mode so I can work in the ladder and on the HMI. I'm going to go ahead and click on the startup display. And this time, we're going to make two buttons. We're going to make an on button and an off button. So I'll go ahead again, click our button. Uh, notice that when we come to the HMI, if we've selected a variable we can use, we get this crosshair with a little hand. Uh, I'm going to click and drag out a box, make it a little smaller so we can fit more stuff on here. And we're going to call this, again under text here, the on button. We need to link this to a bit again. Again, our get next unused address. We'll call it on button 3, because it's our third button. And I'll hit OK here. And close that. Space it out with 
and we'll create another button below it. This will be off button. Again, a touch property. Get next unused, MB5. Off button, three. Okay, so we've created two more buttons. Uh, they're on button and off button. Again, they look very similar. Uh, they function the same way so far. It's in the latter that we're going to give these buttons their logic and, and uh, determine what they do. Uh, by the way, let's take a quick look at some of these HMI tools. Notice that I'm drawing these. Uh, if I want them to be a little more aesthetically pleasing, maybe the same size, there's a couple options we can uh, use here. If I select both of them, I just clicked and dragged my dotted line over both. I can right click and say, make the same size. Okay, so I've made them both the same size. Uh, we can place them, can't overlap them, but we can place them next to each other. This will help organize the HMI a little bit. Uh, again, to do that, I selected more than one. If we want to select more than one thing, we can so, uh, hold our shift key, I'm sorry, control key as well. We notice that one of these is shaded a little differently. Um, the blue squares here in this case, when I selected two, we right click. Uh, when we selected the make same size, the two objects were different sizes, it's going to try and make them both the same size as the one that's selected with the blue dots. Um, we can play with that more later, but for now let's make another binary image. And this is going to represent our output. Again, we'll use our red and our green. So our off state is red and our on state is green. And we're going to link it to another bit. This will be light output three. Oops, I'm sorry, three. And we'll hit OK. Again, binary image, and we've linked it to a bit. Great. Okay, I see one quick question about copy and paste, and let's just take a look at that real quick. Notice we have a light here. If I want to copy it, I can select copy. And if I want to hit paste, we're going to message that says you cannot paste this selection. There already is a variable in the space. What does this mean? Well, HMI property here is kind of um, precious. Uh, it's we, we can't since we can't overlap these variables. Uh, if we were to copy and then paste, we wouldn't know if the object that we were pasting, first off, where to paste it, and second off, if there's enough space to paste it. So what we can do is, again, we'll hit copy. We can move the original to the place where we want the new one and hit paste. It'll place the new one in the location where we hit copy. Uh, so this is actually kind of nice. Uh, it ensures that we have space for the new object to be pasted. Uh, both objects, if we look at them, they'll be identical. They'll be linked to the same bit. Um, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this one just because we don't want it. OK. So we've got an on button and an off button and their light. Let's go, go ahead and, and let's create a network now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and make a new comment. Light output three. Oops. We're going to create a network that some might find uh, or might recognize. Um, this is a latching network. We're going to have two buttons, one to turn the light on and one to turn the light off. Um, let's go ahead and we'll take our direct contact first. And again, we want an on button, so we can type on. Or if you see there's too many uh, items being returned, button. Okay, on button three. Okay, and then again, our output is our memory bit six. We can go ahead and put that here, memory bit six. Okay, so we do this, we're going to create a network just like we made in the first net. When we're pressing MB4, MB6 will be high. When we let go of MB4, MB6 will go low. Now, one of the advantage of, uh, as far as a PLC uh, works, is the scan. Uh, so specifically what's happening here is when the ladder is executing, uh, it's checking all of the inputs. Uh, the PLC is checking the physical inputs. Uh, we're running into the ladder. We're running down these nets, and we're going to say, OK, in the, the, the memory map, uh, that we've built from the inputs and the memory bits is MB0 high. If MB0 is high in this case, 
MD1 will be high. Uh, and net 2, if MB0 is 2, uh, I'm sorry, if MB2 is high, MB3 will be low. Remember our inverted context. So when we get down to net 3, in this case, we'll say is MB4 high? Okay, MB6 can be high. Now, one thing we can take advantage of is the state of MB6 to keep it high. Uh, I know that sounds strange, but let's take a look at um, a latching network now. So what we're going to do is place another contact right below MB4. Um, MB6. So we're now using the coil of MB6 as the output and the contact of MB6 as an input. And we're going to connect these two elements. Now I should mention that we've built three nets so far. Uh, we have one, two, three, and now we have a fourth rung starting in this net. Now we cannot build networks that are more than one uh, rung per net. <coughs> We should try and keep all separate ideas or logic to their own net. So we have these two rungs in the same net. We don't want to see that. We want to put. Oops. We want to keep them to our, to their own network. Now what we can do is join these ideas as parallel statements. So we can click on the connect elements, and what we get now is a crosshair on the ladder section. And we can use this crosshair to draw a line. So we're going to connect in parallel the contact of MB4 and the contact of MB6. I'm going to click on the output of MB6 and just draw straight up. Now notice that when you're using the draw line, uh, you can only connect the endpoints. I can't just draw into the middle of this, and I can't just draw on the side here. Uh, the power, or I'm sorry, the contact always needs to be made at the intersection. Okay. So now with this statement, when we press MB4, MB6 will go high. And when MB6 is high, uh, we're going to continue through the scan. The light output will be high. We'll come back around uh, in the scan. It, it's a big cyclical scan. Uh, and since MB6 was high when we left, the contact of MB6, the MB6 will be high, so the contact will keep the output high. Okay. Um, we can, we'll take a look at this when we download it, but um, let's just assume that it's okay for now. What we need to do is add some way to stop this or to break it. Uh, what we're going to do is add the off button as the break. I'm going to slide over this, con this coil of MB6, and I'm going to add an inverted contact. Now what we're going to link this to is that off button three. So I'm going to connect these again. And what we have here is, again, MB6 will stay high if MB4 or MB6 is high. Or if MB5 goes high, we're going to break the power flow to MB6. Since MB6 goes low and MB4 is low, the contact of MB6 will not be high. Therefore, the output won't be, won't be high at the end of the scan. Okay. So this might sound a little strange, but let's go ahead and download it and take a look at what we're doing. Okay, we're going to say yes, download the images. Now there's a question, can you connect wires between nets? Uh, we cannot connect wires between nets. But if the question was, can we connect wires between rungs, we can. And we can see that as the line we drew between MB6 and the MB4 and MB5. Uh, we can consider this as a wire and a schematic. So this way we can create uh, parallel networks. 